Commuting to campus may have just gotten a bit easier. Temple Zimride is a new ride-sharing program recently initiated by the university to reduce carbon emissions. Temple students, faculty, and staff can log in and offer or request a ride to school from all areas of the Delaware Valley. For more information, visit zimride.temple.edu. The Tuttleman Learning Center hosted speaker Robert Boll to talk about technological advances in journalism. Boll is the vice president of digital media strategy at the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. He spoke to students and faculty about new strategies journalists use to, en to engage their audiences. He believes up-and-coming journalists should learn to develop their own technologies. Every technology that I've seen in journalism has not come from journalists, but come from people adopting technology outside into journalism. And so I think that people like the Knight Foundation are trying to fund more innovation and more the development of tools built for and by journalists is a good thing. Great, Since it was created in 1950, the Knight Foundation has invested over $400 million into the advancement of quality in journalism. Like well, it's officially springtime, and there may not be a better way of kicking it off than with April Fool's Day. That's right. Updates. Ashley Maricol is here with this week's The List on the top five April Fool's jokes of all time. It's that magical time of the year where all we can think about is grass, sun, and, the, and making fools of all of our loved ones. If you're looking for a good prank for this year, MuseumofHoaxes.com has compiled a list of the top 100 April Fool's jokes of all time. Here's the top five. Coming in at number five is Sans Serif. British newspaper The Guardian published a seven-page report about a small vacation destination named after what turned out to be just a play on different printer fonts. Number four is one from right here in Philadelphia. Taco Bell announced its purchase of the Liberty Bell in 1996 and its apparent name change to the Taco Liberty Bell. Instant Color TV in 1960 Sweden is the third biggest joke of all time. A technical expert claimed he could instantly add color to a Sweden's only channel by pulling a nylon stocking over his TV screen. Thousands of people fell for the gag. Coming in at number two is Sports Illustrated's fake pitching sensation Sid Finch. In 1985, SI was able to convince Mets fans that their team signed a pitcher who could throw a baseball 168 miles an hour. That's 65 miles an hour faster than the record and probably the same number as the number of wins the Mets will have this year. And the number one April Fool's joke of all time is the Swiss Spaghetti Harvest. In 1957, BBC News show Panorama reported a huge increase in growth of spaghetti, including spaghetti growing from trees. When viewers called asking how they could grow their own pasta plant, the BBC replied, place a sprig of spaghetti in a tin of tomato sauce and hope for the best. You can check out the full list on museumofhoaxes.com or Google Best April Fool's Jokes. This has been The List. I'm Ashley Miracle. Temple Update will be right back. Coming up on Temple Update, in sports, one Temple softball player had a big game. And Philadelphia celebrates Jazz Month when Temple Update continues. Hey, welcome to the Sports Desk. I'm Josh Rotenberg. It's springtime, and that means one thing, baseball. However, it's Temple's softball team that's stealing the spotlight. Hey, if you only think Philly's ace Roy Halladay throws no-hitters, guess again. On March 27th, Temple senior pitcher Kristen Maris tossed, get this, her second no-no of the season against the Rhode Island Rams. Maris tossed her first no-hitter against Delaware on March 15th. She's just the third Temple player ever to toss two no-hitters in a season, and the first since Jen Crabb did it in 1994. And the Temple baseball team is 14-7 and 1-2 and and in Atlantic 10 play after losing its series with the Xavier Musketeers. The 14 victories, however, matches the total number of wins that Cherry and White had all of last year. The Cherry and White lost their first game on the, of the series on March 25th, 10-4, but then split a doubleheader the next day. But it wasn't all bad news for Temple as senior Ryan Ferguson extended his hitting streak to 23 games. Good work, Ryan. And some football news now. Former Temple safety Jaquan Jarrett may be playing football in Philly after all next season. Jarrett has a private workout scheduled with, for April 6th with the Eagles. Jaquan is considered a mid-round pick by most draft experts, but Russ Land of the Sporting News said Jaquan is, quote, one of the most underrated players in the draft. The former Al will also visit with the Broncos, Jets, Giants, and Rams. And Temple has co-athletes of the week this week. Women's fencer Alyssa Mal 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 Lamusco 
and softball pitcher Kristen Maris. Lamusco competed in her first NCAA championships as a Temple fencer, finishing seventh in foil, and she was named a second team All-American for her performance. And you already know about Kristen Maris's two no-hitters, but she's also riding a three-game winning streak and had a 2.69 earned run average in her three starts this past week. And when Temple's men's basketball team was eliminated in this year's NCAA tournament, they lost more than just the chance to win a national championship. It was their star big man's last game for the Cherry and White. We caught up with the latest Al, who's flying away from the nest. Lavoy Allen had a memorable career as a Temple Al. He was a major contributor on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. Lavoy loved playing on this team, but he says it's the small things he'll miss. It's been a great four years. Uh, I made a lot of friends. Hopefully our friendships last longer than my basketball career. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss it. Miss being, uh, putting on this Temple jersey. Head coach Fran Dunphy recruited Allen four years ago. And now that Lavoie's career is over, Coach Dunphy took some time to reflect on his star's accomplishments. Four straight years of going to NCAA tournaments and having just a, a remarkable run for, for, for us. And uh, we're going to miss him greatly. He's been a special player, and we will... We will talk about that for a, a long time to come. Lavoie Allen will leave school as Temple's all-time leading rebounder. During his time as an Al, Lavoie never boasted about his play, but his teammate Scooty Randall said he never had to. Lavoie was the leader of this team. He didn't say much, you know, but the things that he did and, you know, the way he was out on the court and the way he carried himself, he helped us out a lot. He showed us a lot of things being here, you know, me three years behind Lavoie, so, I mean, it's just tough right now. And even though his collegiate career is over, Lavoie says he's not finished playing the game he grew up loving. To finish out the school year, you know, start preparing, working out, getting ready for you know, draft workouts and stuff like that. And guys, it's hard to replace a 6'9 rebounding machine like Lavoie Allen. Yeah, it's true. A great career here at Temple, and we're definitely going to miss him. Definitely. All right, thanks, thanks, Josh. Josh. Coming up after the break, John Mailer will be here with your entertainment report. Temple Update will be right back. Here with this week's entertainment segment is John Mailer. John has information about a popular television personality that is donating money to journalism. Yeah, this might surprise some people. Thanks, Cherry. The University of Pennsylvania has received a $1 million donation from a popular talk show host. Mari Povich, a Penn alum, made the donation to establish the Povich Fund for Journalism Programs, which will fund seminars and workshops at Penn's Kelly Writers House. In 2006, Povich and his wife, Connie Chung, established a Writer-in-Residence program at the University Center for Programs and Contemporary Writing. EA Sports doing something different this year when it comes to choosing the athlete on the cover of Madden. They're letting the fans decide. 36 NFL players were, were placed into a bracket similar to a March Madness bracket. Eagles quarterback Michael Vick is looking to make his second Madden cover appearance. The cover athlete will be announced on April 27th, so log on to easports.com today to vote. Temple Performing Arts Center recently hosted the Boyer Showcase concert. The program was a part of the National Association of Schools and Colleges of Music Review of the Boyer College. The concert featured students in a variety of departments at Boyer, such as instrumental, voice, opera, jazz, composition, and keyboard. Temple Students Made Magazine 14th Street produced another issue on March 29th. The bi-semester magazine highlights everything there is to love in the city of Philadelphia. The magazine was inserted into an issue of the Temple News. 14th Street offers articles on entertainment, food and drink, living, and relationships. You can also follow 14th Street on Twitter by searching 14th Street Mag. And April is Jazz Appre Appreciation Month. Updates Danielle Grossman has more on how the city of brotherly love celebrates. Philly wants you to put some swing in your spring. April is Jazz Appreciation Month and organizers of the month-long event held a kickoff celebration at City Hall open to the public on Monday morning. Some speakers included Gary Steyer, who is the Chief Cultural Officer and Director for the Office of the Arts, Culture and Creative Economy in Philadelphia. Focusing on the month of April is really an opportunity to get people to recognize the history of jazz in, in Philadelphia, the extraordinary legacy of the great jazz musicians that have worked here, but also the fact that there's still a really vital, thriving 
jazz sector in the city. There will be numerous events all month held at venues such as the Clef Club, the World Cafe Live, and Krista's Jazz Cafe. The Philadelphia International Festival of the Arts is taking place in the month of April and is going to have a number of events related to jazz. But why is Philly embracing this celebration? It's only an institute out of D.C. Basically, is promoting April as Jazz Appreciation Month across the country and asking cities to embrace that. This year is the 10th anniversary of the national celebration. We decided with the rich history that we have here in Philadelphia to make that announcement and we'll make another announcement as a Jazz Appreciation Day on April the 11th. So this April, make sure you pick up an instrument, learn something about jazz history or attend an event. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Danielle Grossman. What about you guys? But I don't know too much about jazz, so I have to check some of those events out. I love jazz, and I will definitely be attending some of these events. Thanks, John. I agree with you. I don't know a whole lot about it myself. Very good. Popular internet slang is now getting recognized in the dictionary. Editors of the Oxford English Dictionary have added several words and phrases to their online edition. Popular texting and online catchphrases like OMG, LOL, and FYI are now in the dictionary. The heart symbol standing for love and often seen in I Heart You, New York, and I Heart You have also been added. They say nothing goes better with Phillies baseball than a tasty cake, and fans get to find out for themselves this season. Aramark announced they will add five kinds of tasty cakes to the arrangement of snacks available at Citizens Bank Park, including peanut butter candy cakes, butterscotch crimpets, and chocolate cupcakes. Prices will be announced on opening day on April 1st. That might be the most exciting news we've, we've gotten in a while. That's going to do Definitely. it uh, for this edition of Temple Update. Remember, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube by searching Temple Update. And you can watch us on TUTV, Comcast, Channel 50, Verizon, Channel 45. For Dan Koob and the rest of the Update team, I'm Cherry Gregg. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.